All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week, we're going to do a bit more to the bullhead. Only a little bit, though, just to finish things off and to fill another video before we can actually go out on a test run. Anyway, this week, we have a dirty great flag from Beck, B-E-C-C, -C, who seem to largely make some very nice cloth flags for boats. Obviously, most of them are naval and historical, but they do quite a few that wouldn't look out of place on a track. Beck have a video guide I'm going to link to in the description as I'll be using it as a bit of a rough guide and sort of following it. If you want to know how it's supposed to be done, watch their video too. In the video it says to use a solvent based glue to stick the flag to the rope. So I'm going to use some Yoohoo. It stays flexible and will soak in a bit to the cloth and really stick well, which sounds ideal. In the packet you get the flag, which is stuck down to a thin card backer. There's some instructions on the back, but if you're here you'd be better off just watching the video. Anyway, once the flag's out of the bag, we can lay it on the top so we can seal up the edges. Now it really is cloth, so if we just cut the woven edges it's going to fray fairly quickly. The video from Beck uses an offcut of the cloth to mop up any excess glue, which would be fine on the smaller flags, but there isn't really any spare on this one. Instead, I'm just going to use a paper towel. If you run some glue right along the edge of the printed bit, we can press it down with the paper towel taking up the excess. We need to do this all the way round, so hopefully the flag lasts a nice long time before it starts looking tatty. Once we've been all the way round, we're going to need to leave it to fully dry before fiddling with it again. An hour or so should do it, but as usual, longer really doesn't hurt. In the Beck video, they use a knife to trim the flag, which makes sense, but I'm not bothered if it's not 100% straight, so I'm just going to use some scissors. With this flag, it's quite easy to see where the edges are. Next, we need to glue it down to the flagpole slash antenna. It's a little bit different to Beck's video as they use a rope. Hopefully it's going to stick well enough to the metal. If we fold the white bit, the cloth's stiff enough that we can make a nice line up the middle so we know where to stick the pole. Yoohoo and similar glue stick really well to themselves, so I'm going to coat the entire area in a fairly thin layer. Stick the pole in the middle and fold the cloth over, smoothing it down and carefully adjusting the position while there's still some movement in the glue. Now I've ended up with way too much, so I'm going to use a fresh bit of paper towel to soak up the excess. Then I'm just going to leave it to dry. Well, that looks like it's worked okay. It's all stuck rather nicely. I'm not a huge fan of the white area though. There isn't any other white on the truck, so it kind of looks a bit out of place. To fix it, I'm going to try and use a marker pen to black it out, just drawing over the white on both sides and the edges. OK, the flagpole can now go back on its mount, which is a slight problem, as the top of the pole is above the bottom of the next shelf above my workbench. So if we go to a wide shot, you can see the carefully placed foam board attached with a mixture of masking tape and packing tape. It's all high-tech, high-end stuff here. I think the flag looks pretty good though, if slightly purple from the marker. I suppose a few very thin, almost dry brushed coats with a matte black might help. But I'll wait and see how the flag looks outside first. Either way, it's doing its job. I like it. Right, so that's the flag done, but the video's still a little bit short, so let's tone down some of the chrome and break things up a bit. The main culprits are, of course, the air boxes and the fuel tanks. So, step one then is to remove the air boxes and the tanks, which is just four screws and four nuts. Now, before we go anywhere near them with the paint, we need to lightly sand the chrome where we want the paint to actually stick. If we don't, it's going to chip off ever so easily. Now, it's fiddly to do without scuffing up the chrome that we want to keep, so go slow and be very careful. Next for the tanks, we'll mask them up. Now, this is probably the most critical bit. We need to make sure all the edges are nicely sealed. I've used Tamiya tape where it really matters, as I found it gives the nicest edges every time. Then I've just used some standard basic tape to fill up the gaps. Next step then is paint, or rather plastic primer, paint, then lacquer if you want them glossy. There's still some glue residue from the tape on the chrome to clean up, but I'll wait a few days before giving them a nice clean. For the air boxes, it's much the same. Sand down the bits you want to paint, 
only this time I hand painted them with Tamiya paint. Rubber black on the hoses and semi-gloss black on the straps. With the shape of the parts it was easier to do it by hand than trying to mask and spray. Before refitting there's one more thing to consider. The stock Tamiya screws that attach the tanks aren't the best looking. So I'm going to replace them with some nice stainless M3x8s. I'll end up replacing the screws on the roll bar struts too at some point, so all the visible screw heads on the body look nice. With the tanks refitted and the air boxes back on, I think it's coming together quite nicely. The chrome bits aren't quite so over the top. I still can't quite fit the truck under the shelf though with the flag on the back, so we'll have to wait to see it in all its glory. Won't be long now though, and of course there's still lots to do with the lights. But that's going to be it for this week, so sorry if the video has been a bit disjointed, I've kind of run out of things to do on the bench. I'm waiting for some bits and bobs to arrive for other projects, so we should have some nice new things to look at again soon. In the meantime though, that's it from me, so as always thanks for watching, like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!